Okay, so welcome back to part two. And so what we're going to do in part two is uh, turn our attention to the uh, two variable data. And um, uh, this is the same lists, the same lists as we had last time. So what I'm going to be focusing on now are the quiz and test scores. And so the notion or the idea of two variable data is that we have a series of quiz scores. Um, I suspect that the uh, quiz score is going to give uh, an indication or a prediction of how a student's going to perform on the test. And so I believe that those two data sets are related. And so in order to, to get a visual representation of how those points are related, what we're going to start by doing is a scatter plot. So I'll come back to the calculator. Um, I could just go in and modify this graph page from before. What I'm going to do instead is just add a new data and statistics page. And then to begin with my scatter plot, come to the bottom. I'm going to select my quiz scores as the uh, X variable because I believe that those are the independent um, and that the test score will depend on or in, uh, to some extent be predicted by the quiz score. So that is the dependent variable. If you move to the left hand side of the screen, we have an option to add a variable to the Y axis. The variable I'm going to add is the test scores. And so what we have now is a scatter plot. And if you hover over any of the points, the coordinates are given. That coordinate uh, that I'm hovering over now would mean a quiz score of 78 and a corresponding test score of 81. As you can see from the scatter plot, uh, these seem to be uh, fairly strongly correlated in a positive um, relationship, positive uh, correlation. And um, the next question, of course, is whether a linear model would be a good fit for the data. Okay, and so we'll just quickly uh, change the uh, color. Not really necessary, but it does make it look a little better. And so what we're going to do now is um, perform, we've already performed our scatter plot, we're now going to perform a linear regression and a residual plot. Uh, and so if we come back to the graph and go to the menu, we have an analyze option, and one of the analysis options is regression and we are interested in linear regression. So if I click on that, it gives me uh, the line of best fit, y equals 0.84 approximately, 0.84x plus 14.12 if we're rounding to two decimal places, and it draws that line of best fit, which shows, um, kind of reinforces whether it fits um, uh, reasonably well or not. Um, in order to um, reinforce our suspicion of whether it fits well or not, what we can also do is go into the analyze menu again and you'll see we now have the option after doing a regression of showing a residual plot and so what that residual plot shows us is the extent to which our uh, prediction model our line of best fit is accurate so in this case it's fairly accurate the quiz score of 68 had a residual score of 0.79 so what that 0.79 means is that uh, the student's test score was 0.79 points above what uh, the linear regression model predicted it would be. So that's a pretty good, pretty close prediction. Uh, there's a few other points which are fairly close. And then there is, of course, uh, there seem to be some potential outliers or exceptions. Uh, the person who scored 85 on their quiz scored 4.48 points less than predicted on their test. And so that maybe is an indication that the fit is not uh, perfect. And that moves us on to the, uh, the next point, which is the correlation coefficient. So this will attach for us a specific numerical value that allows us to judge how strong the fit is. And so in order to find the um, correlation coefficient, what we're going to do is add a calculator page from the statistics menu. We are going to select... Um, our uh, linear regression and so much like we did in the uh, actual regression menu but this time on the calculator page we'll list our uh, two uh, data sets so uh, quiz and test and what that gives us is uh, the equation again 0.84x plus 14.12 but it also gives us this value over here which is r 0.9556 and so that is the correlation coefficient 
and the closer it is to 1, uh, the stronger the correlation. This is very close to 1, and so that indicates that our linear model is a very good fit, um, and uh, the correlation is very strong in the linear sense. Of course, uh, remember that if we get a negative R value, that's not necessarily bad fit. That just means that the correlation is a negative one, an increase in X causing a decrease in Y instead. And so uh, R values close to 1 or close to minus 1 indicate strong fit. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is just how to uh, find uh, exponential regression. So we may suspect that the relationship between the data points is in fact exponential. Um, on the graph it's very simple. Um, what you could do on the menu and the analyze would be instead of selecting uh, linear regression we could of course select exponential um, and it will give you the exponential equation instead. Um, similarly on the calculate page if we want to know how good that exponential model is we could simply do um, our uh, regression calculation. Let me do that again. So statistics, stat calculations, and we want the exponential regression uh, quiz and test. And in this case, uh, we've got our exponential function, and our R value is once again fairly strong, but not as strong as the linear model. And so that's how you do exponential regression.